And in this episode, I have with me here in studio today, Representative Jim Dwyer. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. Oh, I'm glad to have you here today. And uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And glad to that you you're and here your family. To, to uh, talk about what's been going on. You are our representative in the uh, State House in Boston. What does that exactly mean? Well, I represent the 30th Middlesex District. Mm -hmm. I have essentially three quarters of Auburn and half of uh, Reading. Okay. Uh, originally, when I first got elected, I had, uh, I think, three precincts in Reading, one in Stoneham, and three quarters of Wolverine. So, <laughs> as you could probably say, at the beginning, it was a uh, quite sure. a, quite a uh, not a chore, but it really, to yeah. represent three towns is very, yeah. very difficult. A little bit of redistricting happens there. Exactly. Every 10 years, they do the redistricting, yep. as you know. And uh, I was asked, uh, you know, if, if I wanted to pick up uh, an extra precinct in uh, Reading, and it worked out perfect for me. Excellent. So Excellent. right now, I have half of Reading uh, with Brad Jones, mm -hmm. the minority leader. Right. And uh, three quarters of Reading. So uh, three uh, quarters of Woburn. Of so, Woburn. so so in great. the process of, of representing the Woburn and Reading yeah. in the state house, you, you participate in the state legislature, voting on bills and committees and that kind of thing. I, I, exactly. And exactly. so so what kind of uh, activities are you involved in when you do that? Well, I mean it's it depends on what the committees you get you receive. Sure. Um, I've got some good committees. I've had some since I originally got elected. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had public safety for many, many years. Okay. I was on Judiciary Committee for a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, this time I've uh, been, uh, and I asked, and been placed on Revenue Committee. Okay. And uh, with the budget coming up in April and sure. May and June and the hearings with the revenue uh, part mm -hmm. of it, it's been very, very exciting for me, frankly. Okay. I still have public safety. All right. With uh, being a juvenile probation officer for 35 mm -hmm. years of my life, and a certain amount of expertise in that. Exactly, and, that and I had Reading uh, before I received the chief job in Middlesex County, yeah. uh, the 56 cities and towns. Right. I had Reading as one of my towns for uh, oh jeepers creepers, almost four years. <laughs> so, and then I have uh, policy and steering, and that's okay. a committee that's essentially. Nobody really knows anything about policy and steering. <laughs> but policy and steering is is a committee that after the the bills do the process in their committees, mm -hmm. goes to bills in third reading to make sure okay. they're prepared to go to go to the uh, floor for a vote. Sure. Uh, policy and steering is actually schedules those uh, okay. those on the floor for a vote. Okay. So what are some of the accomplishments of the legislature in the past year? Well, uh, it, it's been a slow year this year, okay. frankly. Uh, I wish we had uh, accelerated a little bit more and did a little bit more, frankly, sure. but uh, we are currently embarking on the opiate uh, mm -hmm. uh, bill that's coming up, I uh, believe, on this coming Wednesday. Okay. Today's to Tuesday. Right. Tomorrow we'll be in, in the opiate bill, and okay. hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to be doing something, some good things, uh, you know, for the opiate uh, situation, which is sure. just uh, totally, totally out of hand, as you probably right. know. You know, right. so. Right. Right. Any other uh, personal accomplishments this year, in this past year, uh, for for you, for the district? Or, well, I think you know it's 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 constituent services. Yeah. And I like to pride myself on the constituent services, uh, you know, in the committee hearings and but constituent services and and being in constant contact with uh, like Bob Lalasha from the school sure. uh, from the uh, from the town, uh, the mayor of the city of Woburn, sure. different constituencies, you know. Uh, the bottom line, and especially with the budget season coming up, is right. uh, is the bottom line dollar you're going to bring back to every city and town right. and what they need. Right. right. Uh, but it's a very, very rewarding prof uh, profession, Kevin, when you can when you can actually have an impact, mm -hmm. you know, and a vote and a say. Sure. And you have an impact on folks that might be having problems with uh, uh, Social Security. Okay. Or problems, folks with uh, which is very. Uh, partial to me, folks with developmental disabilities, sure. to make the make sure those type of programs in education, naturally, mm -hmm. and local aid, to make sure that you get they get their fair share sure. and bang for the buck. Sure. And frankly, sometimes agencies like folks with developmental disabilities, they don't have the voice on Beacon Hill that okay. an insurance company would have. Right, right. You know, those those are the ones that need a voice on Beacon Hill. Sure. And being on a board of directors at uh, New Path for many years, and now mm -hmm. uh, was. CMARC before, New Path and Woburn, and being involved, very involved with EMARC here in Reading. Right. Um, I pride myself and I've tried to do the best I can to be their voice when it comes to budget time. Sure. So, so uh, let's say I had a problem with something that was going on, say with uh, Route 28. I had a problem with Route 28, which is a state road. And uh, how would I 
contact you to find out something to be done with that? And what would you do with that information, what you found? Of it? course. I, generally speaking, you would get in touch with your, your, your selectmen or right, your, right. your town. Right. And they would get in touch with me. Okay. And it is a state road. A lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people think right. that roads that come through towns are town right, roads. Right. Well, most of them are. Right. But, the but some of them aren't. <laughs> some of them aren't. And the ones that, in my opinion, it seems to arise to have the most problems are state roads. Right, right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you would contact, you can always contact directly to my office. Sure. And I uh, have a great aide. He's, uh, he's been absolutely fantastic. His name is Joe Demers for the folks that are watching in right. TV that, uh, <laughs> that need some services. We're always there to help out. Okay. And uh, that's where we would start. Then we would get in touch with DOT. Okay. You know, in DOT, I have to say, now this is separate from the MBTA issue, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> But DOT in this particular area, uh, it's the catchment area number four. Mm -hmm. They're out of Arlington, and uh, they do what they do. They're pretty, pretty receptive and okay. pretty responsive. Okay, good, good. So, so you could contact your local selectman or contact your office, and then you would take that to the appropriate agency exactly. and say, "Hey, you know, there's this issue. Could you right? Exactly. You know, work we have we that? have a, you know personal relationships mm -hmm. with uh, with the folks that work for DOT. Right. And uh, being a full time state legislator. Uh, that's the important. It's it's the TLC and it's the personal touch, and it's the relationships you have. It's like I guess it's like that in any job. Sure. But sure. especially like that in the state house. Yeah. But it's more so when you have the agencies like the MBTA and you have DOT. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the MBTA since yeah. you brought it up. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the commuter rail in particular is important for people who are in Reading. A lot, a lot of yeah. people who live in Reading, in particular, uh, use the commuter rail to get into the city to work and, and what have you. And obviously, the MBTA had some issues last winter with all the snow and all the cold. Just a few though, Kevin. Just a is that few. correct? <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. Can you uh, maybe update us as to what has happened with the MT MBTA as far as you know well, in terms I can of fixing some of those issues? Well, I can tell you, I, I have a lot of confidence in the new administration coming in to, okay. to, to alleviate a lot of those problems. I mean, it was very, uh, very heartwarming, for lack of a better phrase, to know that we had somebody in state government where actually had a little bit proactive and were doing things during the summer months yes, yes. to alleviate <laughs> these problems that might come to now. Right. Uh, I do know now with the financial uh, the transition to the financial board, okay. overlooking the MBTA, right. that's another layer of folks that are overlooking what's happening. Okay. I mean, there's still going to be inherent uh, whether you can't change, but um, it, was, it was a travesty. Yeah. It, it really yeah. was. I mean, when... I had more phone calls from poor people that have to go to work every day that are standing out in front of the, uh, you know, the, the Reading, uh, Reading Depot, yeah. Reading Depot yeah. waiting for their transportation so they can make a living and provide for their families. Right, right. And when you have people telling you in, in, in quasi-state governments and some state legislatures, well, stay home and do your work at home. Right. Well, you know, a lot of people, most people don't have that luxury. Right, right. So they need that transportation. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm optimistic. That what, that what things have been done since last year and the lessons that, that uh, the DOT and MBTA have learned, I'm right. hoping that's going to alleviate the problems. Good, good, because you know, obviously, as you said, it's a lifeline for a lot of people and who choose to live here in Reading but have to work in Boston to provide for their exactly. families. And, exactly, exactly. And it's the only way to get there, um, you know, for, for many people. And so it's important for that yeah. to work the way exactly. it's supposed to work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as the government has encouraged people to continue to use public transportation, it's incumbent upon them to make sure the public transportation works when it's supposed to. Well, you to. can't encourage people to do something when they can't do it. When they can't do it. That's, you know, exactly, I mean, that's it's, exactly right. It, it's, it's outlandish. Yeah. And so, so uh, you know, you talked about budget and making sure that the cities and towns get what they need to, to function all that. Can I, you can explain that process just a little bit to us. I know, you know, the town of Reading is working on their next year's budget right now. Right. Um, as the budget process begins to unfold, how does uh, that work with, with determining what kind of state aid comes to Reading or to Woburn. Yeah. Um, well, being on the uh, Revenue Committee, I've really, and I was on Ways and Means, I think, uh, two sessions ago. Okay. And Ways and Means is really, that's where everything evolves in the mm -hmm. State House. Okay. Ways and Means appropriates. So if, if Reading wants something, it'll build, everything yeah. goes through Ways and Means. Right. Right. Any monetary issue goes through there. Sure. So I did receive a, a tremendous education being on that committee. Now being on revenue, I'm getting even more of an education <laughs> as far as what the revenue is. Sure. But I usually get together, not usually, I do. I do get together with Brad Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll speak specifically about Reading. And uh, Brad's been a great partner for Reading. Uh, Brad and I uh, are personal friends. 
-hmm. uh, I think he does a great job for the for the city of Reading. Sure. And uh, Brad and I usually get around, get together just around this time, mm -hmm. and then solicit information from Bob Lasher or Peter Heckenblecker that was right. there before, right. uh, John Doherty, and to see what. Reading's needs are. Sure. What do you need versus what did you need last year? Right. And then we'll do the very best we can. Never make any promises, right. but it won't be from lack of effort, that's for sure. 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 But we uh, try to do the best we can to bring back a bank for our dollar right. for the good folks in Reading. Right. And obviously, uh, everyone else from all the other districts are doing the same for their towns and exactly. cities. Exactly. Everybody, in, the pizza pie is only so big, Kevin. Right. Right. But everybody right. wants that slice of pizza pie. Sure. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in the second yeah. half. But I know we're coming up on the on the uh, uh, break here. And I, I know you wanted to mention something about uh, Jim Cormier. And, oh, and, I, and the yeah. I, and thank you very much for allowing me to do this. Um, being a juvenile probation officer, um, that was my commitment for 35 years. Mm -hmm. And working all over Middlesex County from Cambridge to, and I worked in Brockton at one point in time, yeah. Yeah. to Lowell. Uh, to suburban towns, I can tell you that uh, of all the, the uh, police personnel that I've met mm -hmm. and professionals, I've kn I knew Jimmy when Jimmy was a ju juvenile officer in Reading. Okay, that's a long, long time. That's over sure. 25 years ago. Yeah, and that's yeah. a long time, and I've had nothing but admiration for Jimmy. Um, but I just wanted to say publicly, I wanted to thank him for his his uh, friendship with me. Mm -hmm. Jimmy was never quiet about asking for things for the Reading, <laughs> Reading community uh, That's true. in the police department. That's he was true. never shy. But uh, Jimmy was the ultimate professional, and Reading was very, very fortunate to have uh, Jimmy as the chief. And All I can right. tell you, it, it, it's a great segue with Mark Sagala coming into yeah. Yeah. And I wish Mark the very best. We talked the other day, and you know anything, obviously, that I can do for Mark sure. being on public safety, what... Yeah. With the police department and the fire department, I'd be more than more than happy to right. do that. And uh, you know, just a plug for this show, uh, Mark Sagala is going to be on the next episode. Of, well, of you give Mark my best, and uh, um, Reading's been very, very fortunate to have that leadership in the, in the police department. Sure, sure. All right. Well, with that, we're going to take a break here in community conversation. We'll return in just one moment. Hi, my name is Jean Braski, member of the Reading School Committee, and you're watching RCTV. <laughs> Welcome back here to Community Conversation on RCTV. My name is Kevin Vent, and we're continuing to talk with Representative Jim Dwyer, who is our representative in the state legislature down in Boston. We had an interesting first half uh, talking you, about kind of some things that have gone on in the past year and kind of what your job is in terms of representing us here in Reading down in Boston. For the second half, I'd like to talk a little bit about the year that's coming up, 2016, and some of the things that are happening. You mentioned in the first part about uh, a bill about uh, opioid addiction. I'd like right. maybe to expand on that. What exactly does that bill uh, do? Well, we're hoping uh, there's two versions of the bill. There's actually three versions of the bill. <laughs> there's a Senate version, a House version, and a Governor's version. Sure. The House version and the Governor's version parallel each other. Okay. The Senate version is a little bit different than the House and the Governor's version. However... They're all good bills, sure, and certainly bills that are that are long overdue. Then mm -hmm. we need to do that. Uh, being a juvenile probation officer for 35 years and being very, very involved with uh, drug and alcohol abuse and mm -hmm. gang-related issues, uh, I think uh, opiate abuse was something that was tucked around the corner. Right. Nobody wanted to pay attention to it. Sure. You know, shame on you for doing that. Right. And right. It was kind of a stigmatized. It was it was stigmatized you know, for, for, for being a heroin addict, uh, mm -hmm. opiate abuse. Uh, I think it's a terrific thing that it's, that it's kind of uh, come out in the open. Yep. You know, every community has this problem. Right. As Reading Wells knows, Wuben knows, they all have these problems. Uh, the bill hopefully is going to be a step in the right direction. Uh, essentially what the House bill is going to call for is 
if somebody has a heroin overdose, there's going to be uh, a 23-day evaluation process that comes with that okay. that overdose. Um, and any medications that uh, are going to be uh, prescribed for that particular individual. Uh, and th this is where the bill is different a little bit. Uh, the House version calls for a seven-day supply. Right. Whereas before, sometimes uh, these folks were unfortunately overprescribed, mm -hmm. so they became dependent on, on, the, right, on, on, the, on, on the, the prescriptions to solve prescription the problem. Prescription drugs right. instead of the other drugs. Right. So it's a step in the right direction. The only thing I worry about a little bit is the availability, availability of rehabilitation beds. Mm -hmm. um, if you're affluent and you have a lot of money, uh, you can afford some of these programs. Right. But if you're not, okay, and your insurance doesn't cover it, most insurance don't cover right. that, right. which is a shame. Uh, for lack of uh, you know, income, uh, you are not afforded the protections and the rehabilitation sure. program somebody else has. So I'm hoping at some point in time when this bill transcends out of committee mm -hmm. and we vote for the basic opioid bill, I mm -hmm. hope that obviously that uh, the rehabilitation, because you can, you can go into it for a detox program. But unless you have something when you come out of the detox program right. that's going to be a long-standing assistance program. And you're going to slide right back into the circumstances that got you there. It's in incredibly the easy to do yeah. that. And that's the sad part about it because I've met with so many great parents in this world that get so excited when their children, you know, uh, are, uh, go into rehab yeah. and detox and everything looks so good. But you know something? Right. Not everything is good. Yeah. And they go from, you know, just absolute, you know, euphoria that uh, you know my child is going to be taken care of. Oh, everything is good, and then they relapse back into what they were doing before. Right, right. I've seen so much misery over the years. Again, I hate to belabor the point. Being a juvenile probation officer and and seeing the devastations that drug and alcohol can do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, amongst many, many other things. Right. But uh, you know, the, the the dredge of drugs and alcohol is just a just a plague in our society. And and I'm very optimistic that hopefully this bill, I don't think it's a panacea for for everything, mm -hmm. but it's certainly a major major step in the right direction. So it's really a, it seems like it's a bill that's seeking not only to enforce the law but also to treat those that are caught in this difficult circumstance so that, that they don't continue to, to, to happen. I mean, you got to look at it for the way it is. I mean, you, these, these poor folks are drug addicted. Yeah. Who wants to be drug addicted? Right. You don't grow up in the world wanting to be drug addicted. Right. For whatever your circumstances are, no, no parents at home, uh, right. you know, physical abuse at home, mental abuse, uh, being bullied at school. I mean, there's so many problems that lead you into drug and alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. I think we have to have a little bit of a heart, Kevin, sure. and identify it for what they is. These aren't evil, evil people. Right. These are people that need help. These are, these are people that do illegal things mm -hmm. and hurt people because of drug dependency. Yeah. So we need to make sure that uh, we're looking at the, the whole concept of that individual, right. not just as an evil person. We just want to push the side, mm -hmm. keep in the corner, and not do anything to help them. Sure. We need to be able to be human beings in this world right. and kind of protect them and do the best we can to solve their problems. Sure. Because as a result, when you're solving their problems, you're solving a lot of a other lot issues of other in issues, the community. Yeah. Yeah. So you had mentioned that the House bill and the Governor's bill were extremely close, yeah. and the Senate bill was a little different. What is different about the Senate bill, and how the will Senate, that kind of be figured bill, out? The Senate bill, I think, it, it, it doesn't really eliminate the seven days uh, prescription okay. period. Okay. Uh, the, the, the situation as far as rehabilitation is a little bit different. Okay. They're all parallel they're all, and the same. Yeah. There's minor differences. As I said, they're all great bills. So that'll be worked out in committee. And, you and, betcha. And there'll be, be a final absolutely. bill that will be presented. And, absolutely. And, and something will come to the floor. Well, I hope that happens because obviously that's something that not only Reading, but communities all over the state are dealing with the, well, the, I mean, this uh, issue. Look at it, Kevin. I mean, it's so bad that every town now, we, we never had a, a drug uh, a drug czar, so to speak, right, or a drug right. person that, that ran programs. And now Women every community a, does. Every yeah. community has it. Yeah. You know, to work with the schools, and it's all about education. Right. right. You no, know, but you can't control somebody who's bullied, and you can't, uh, you know, control what goes on when somebody is at home as far right. as domestic violence. Uh, you can't. You can't control these things. The best thing you can do is to understand them mm -hmm. and uh, make an effort to understand them. And, and help the person once the make person. Make an does. effort to understand what's yeah. going on. Yeah.
Now go out of your way. Try to be a little bit sensitive. Sure. So obviously the opioid abuse issue is, is an important one, but are there any other uh, bills that are coming down the pike here in the next year or so that uh, I know you filed a few that you have? Yeah, kind of I've got a couple heart. of bills that I've uh, filed. I've got one bill for unfunded mandates. Okay. You know, uh, the state and the federal government, it's very easy to say, okay, we're passing a, we're passing a law. and Everyone it, has to use blue pencils in school. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, what do you do? Get rid of all the red pencils that you've accumulated right. over the years, right. and you have to go buy blue pencils. Right. Well, that's, that's an unfunded mandate. Right. Um, the bullying issue was, mm -hmm. was, was a perfect example. Now, yep. that needed attention. There is no question about it. Right. Okay, but originally, before the bullying bill was filed in, uh, uh, finalized in Boston, I mean, it was a, a mandate that the schools had to hire a professional person. You had to do right. this. You had to do that. Right. No, that, that's very costly. Yeah. And when the school is doing a budget right about now, mm -hmm. and it comes into Boston, they're not factoring in an unfunded mandate. Right. So we have to be very, very careful. So the bill I filed was that any mandate that comes back to cities and towns has to have a funding mechanism. Okay. Now, if it's a mandate that doesn't require some kind of a cost, mm -hmm. that's a different story, depending on what the complexity of it is. But if, it ha if it's something that's going to cost the cities and towns, all I'm looking for is to have a study, okay. okay, and to stop the unfunded mandates from coming. All right. That way there, there's a, there's a funding mechanism along with that sure. to help the schools that have already done the budget and help the towns. Right, right. And at least if nothing else to, to, to analyze what the costs for these things may be. It's exactly. So that we, we can look at that. Exactly. Um, the other bill I filed is a public safety bill. Uh, I filed it the last couple of sessions. Uh, I've had support on this bill from the uh, police and the fire and the corrections mm -hmm. office. It's a very simple bill. Uh, as you know, Wuben, we had a we had a tragic uh, incident that happened when uh, Jack McGuire, uh, right. you know, was essentially murdered in Woburn yeah. at Coles. And uh, since that time, uh, when I started to get involved with that, first of all, Jack was a very close personal friend with me. My sure. father-in-law was uh, Jack's father was actually chief of police in Woburn. Mm -hmm. And my, my father-in-law, who was one of my heroes in life, uh, was a police officer in Wolverine, mm -hmm. very close to the Maguire family, as we all were. So when I found out that at the time the duty line of death benefit was uh, $100,000, mm -hmm. but that was, that was set in uh, 1993. Well, it was a different world in 1993. It was a different world. Doesn't yeah. seem like a long time ago, but it was right. a different world. $100,000 evidently was a lot of money in those days. But when you have, uh, you know, the increase in college educations, right. bread, milk, yeah. when you look at how much those have escalated over the years, and you have a police officer that may have two children, three children, four children, and they're young kids, and they're going to be going off to college, $100,000 isn't a lot of money. Right. So I filed a bill. It's very simple. It's two parts of the bill. First bill is the line of duty death benefit, hopefully we would never use, by the way, right. Right. is $250,000. And the next part of it is if un this unfortunate happenstance happens again, that their family would receive retirement benefits one rank up from what that individual was. Okay. So if he was a sergeant, he would get, lieutenant. the family would get lieutenant benefits. Okay. All right. And I think that that was something that we can do to honor our fallen heroes and public safety so officials. So this is specifically for those who die in the line of duty. That's correct. Um. So originally when I filed it, it was police. We've included, uh, well, no, it was, included, it was uh, police and fire. Okay. And we've included uh, corrections offices. Okay. Because when you think about it, nobody ever thinks of corrections no, offices. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, and, and they're... They're, they're <laughs> doing a vital job in our, in our uh, state and yeah, society. Yeah, with our so. most violent population. Right. So uh, the... The, court, uh, the corrections offices are included. So I'm hoping that uh, that got a favorable opinion last time. I'm hoping I'm going to get it out of the committee this time good. and on the floor for a vote and uh, do some good things for our public safety heroes. Good. Well, I think that that's important to, uh, to remember. You know, it seems like we all naturally have sorrow when, when an, uh, an incident happens and we're concerned for the family, but it seems as though it only takes a few months and we forget. Betcha. That that family has to live the rest of their life without their father or their brother or their husband or what have you, um, who was killed in the line of duty, and and so to to try to our best to remember them, I think is important, and well, to help I'm, them along with the rest Kevin, of their lives. You know, yeah. I mean, without police and fire and corrections offices, I mean, matter right. what, what kind of a chaotic society this would be. Yeah, yeah. You know, and their their families have to worry about them going to work every day. They had the fire in uh, one of the fires today in Boston, and. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in Brockton, I'm sorry, and you see the firefighters standing, right. uh, sitting on top of that roof with the flames coming out? With the out? flames coming out. That was quite a dramatic picture they had on the you news. Bet you betcha. Yeah. You know, imagine being sitting at home and, and knowing that firefighter. That, that firefighter is your father, no, your brother, your, your wife, husband your whatever, husband. Right? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming on today and sharing a little bit about what you're doing uh, in Boston and representing us. And uh, you mentioned that if someone had an issue or a concern, they could reach you at your office. Absolutely. Um, if I can give the number, I would please reach out to me. Sure. Uh, this is what I do full time. Absolutely. I do have a great aid. Um, and if anybody has any concerns, I don't care where in writing you live. You know, if you want to give me a call, give me a call. Right. We'll transfer it over to Brad or whatever it is. But right. you can always reach me at uh, 617. 722-2220. All right. And my aide's name is Joe Demers. And he will so please, if there's something we can do to help you or make your life a little bit easier going on, or if you just have questions, sure. you don't know how to navigate the system, right. please give us a call. We'll do the best we can. Okay. Thank you, Representative Dwyer. Thank you for being here today and sharing with us everything that's going on. And yeah. thank you for uh, everything that you do for us down in the state. Well, I appreciate uh, the local media. Uh, I'm very active uh, with Wuben Public Media. Sure. Reading Public Media is doing a good job, and this is one of the ways we can we can answer to the public sure. and uh, let folks know what we're doing. And I appreciate uh, the ability to come on here. All right. Well, thank you again for uh, being here, uh, Representative Dwyer, and thank you for watching. I hope that in the future you'll look for our future episodes as well. This has been Community Conversation here on RCTV. Have a good day.